got a big man touchdown, Rex. Oh, you got to love it right there. The big dude's over there. We don't even know his name. Kendall Lamb. <laughs> And he caught a touchdown. <laughs> his name is Kendall <laughs> Lamb. And then, oh, Dan, Donovan Peoples-Jones. This one's about Kevin Stefanski. Beautiful design with your personnel grouping, taking your shot. I love the route. Gets the corner to have a little bit of bad vision. <laughs> Drop your hips. And it's a great throw by Baker Mayfield. Absolutely love everything about that play from the Browns. 75-yard touchdown. It's 24-7. Cleveland Mayfield is celebrating. And then, how about the dime, Dan? Down in the red zone, you get that double move. And this is one of his favorite guys. Higgins, watch the patience. Set that corner. Now burst. And I love that throw. That is absolutely perfection from Baker Mayfield. Mayfield, four touchdowns in the first half. It's 38-7. to seven. Can Ryan Tannehill lead them back? Well, actually, the answer is yes. A.J. Brown, it's 38-13. We got the strip. We got the fumble. We got that touchdown. It's 38-21 after the Titans go for the two. So they're in it. Fourth quarter, less than a minute remaining. The one thing you can't do is turn it over on a fourth down. They do. Mayfield crossed the line, but then it's a fumble. Yeah, and Baker's trying to go get that first down and extend that football, and that ball pops out. It's his only mistake of the day. Credit the Titans for picking it up. Could have cost them. Tannehill on a fourth down, finding Cameron Batson. It's 41-35, so it's going to come down to an onside kick. Not so much. The dive, Andy Janovich is there to preserve it and hang on. A game the Browns deserve to win. 41-35, Baker Mayfield, 334 yards and four touchdowns passing. Not only one of his best games of 2020, perhaps his best game as a pro. He finished with 0% off-target percentage for the first time in his career. And then afterwards, he talked about what difference has been made this year versus last. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, then I don't do that. <laughs> Ray, Ray, you it's love great. it. Pretty I do love it. It just shows how far he's grown. Ryan, what do you think? What's the first thing we say about Baker Mayfield after that performance yesterday? Believe land. You remember when LeBron went back and they and they oh, became geez. believe land and they thought that they could win. That's what this team is. And it's Kevin Stefanski's belief in Baker Mayfield. It's Baker Mayfield's belief in Kevin Stefanski. But more importantly, when Baker Mayfield believe in believes in himself, that's when he's the most dangerous. He's like a streaky three point shooter. If Baker Mayfield sees the first ball go in, he's going to grab another one and he's going to do a heat check. And if that heat check goes well, then you see what we got to see yesterday. Day. They had a great game plan. Kevin Stefanski came out with the belief that Baker Mayfield could move the ball through the air against the Tennessee Titans. First play off the back, first down pass to Jarvis Landry, and it's a first down. Also in that drive, there should have been a touchdown pass to Donovan Peoples-Jones that he dropped, and it was right on the money. And it was from that point on that Baker Mayfield understood that Nick Chubb running the ball first, him in the play action pass being dialed in, was going to be the way that they were going to win and dominate this game. And we saw it from the start to the finish. This this is perfect Baker. This is the Baker that they drafted, the Heisman Trophy winner, the Baker Mayfield that slammed flags in the middle of the field against Ohio State. And if they get this guy down the stretch with the way that this run game is playing, you do not want to see the Cleveland Browns. And he made everybody and put everybody on alert that he was feeling dangerous. It's a good thought. We'll talk about the team in a second because I think that is important. But, but Dan, let's talk about Baker Mayfield. It's his best performance since his uniform set Oklahoma on it. What specifically did you see from him? Yeah, it's his biggest win, and it, it is his best performance. Uh, two C's come to mind, confidence and clarity. And that's what he's playing with right now. He's playing with the confidence. He hears that play call, and he's like, all right, I'm really confident in this play call with the people that I'm doing, with, doing it with. And then there's a the clarity of thought process. This is not just, hey, guys are wide open by themselves, and I can make some throws. That's part of it. Kevin Stefanski is doing a really nice job of scheming some stuff open. But it's also that he's shown up and made some plays as well. He's made some throws. I love the fact that they get him moving to his left. He's very confident doing it. Jarvis Landry has been somebody that Baker Mayfield looks at and he goes, you know what? I trust that he's going to get open. DPJ has really started to become an impactful performer of this offense. You see the screen game taping, taking kind of a step forward. So it's like, this is why coaching matters. Like th This offense and this quarterback last year to everybody stunk. And this offense and this quarterback to everybody this year is really good. And there are certainly a couple different pieces, but the biggest piece is Kevin Stefanski he has stepped in and goes, Baker, you're the leader of our football team. And you need to show us you're the leader of our football team with your play. And for the last five weeks, Baker Mayfield has done that because the highs right now for him are high, and he's really gotten rid of some of the lows that we saw last year.
So look, uh, Rex, for a team that has been as bad for the last couple of decades as they have been, and it was 1-31 in, in a stretch just a few years ago, to be 9-3 and three and to be on your way to making the playoffs is in and of itself an accomplishment. But as you watch them, I know you think this is a team that can do more than that this January. Yeah, absolutely. And it never took this game right here to, to tell me that. I said it the previous week that if they get average play from the quarterback position, this team can go deep in a playoffs. Well, if they get this Baker Mayfield, shoot, they can win it all. Mm. And so that's where, where you look at it. It's like uh, what Dan talks about with Kevin Stefanski. He brought in a system. And you know what? They, they drafted players, brought players into it. They have one of the best offensive lines in the league. Last year, oh my gosh, were they a mess. Mm -hmm. So what they did, they get a, a high free agent in there, Conklin. First round pick playing at tackles. And those guys are playing great, but it's based on the run game. They got Baker Mayfield underneath center. Wait a second. I thought he was supposed to be a shotgun guy. No, they put him underneath. They move the pocket for him. They, they give him vision, and he's a different guy. And all the credit in the world goes to, that, to, uh, to the quarterback and to Baker Mayfield. And even the little thing when he said, I just don't do the stupid things anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's the truth. And I see growth from him right here. And I said, look, I pulled for this guy. There's no question about it. Because he had to, he had to come back a little bit, and he did. And and I tell you what, if they play like this, if Baker Mayfield can play like this, they can beat anybody. He, he, I think that it's interesting. And, and again, the meeting between you and he on our show at the Super yeah. Bowl was so fascinating because he reminds me a little of you. He's got a little bit of Rex Ryan in him, which is I think okay. why you do root for him despite all of the criticism. And let's be fair, <laughs> I was just being honest. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yep. And and so is he, generally speaking. <laughs> right. And so when he's been bad, we've been the first to point out when he's been bad. Yesterday he was spectacular. Let's make sure we say that in his in his credit. Okay, we'll take a short. I, I love it. Uh, Carson Wentz is looking, well, the communication. Listen, what do you want him to say? You're playing like hot garbage. I'm going to play the other cat. It's, it's plain and simple. You only thought he was coming in for a, a play or a series? Mm. What, are you out of your mind? Do you not realize you were playing horribly? And so to me, he doesn't owe him anything. Put him on the bench and see you later. Now, the contract is going to become complicated. <laughs> you just saw the numbers up there. He has no money guaranteed after next season, but the dead money hit on next year if they don't keep Wentz would be devastating. Can we take a quick moment, please, on Aaron Rodgers and the performance that he put together yesterday in this game as well? Because the Eagles side of it tends to become the bigger talking point. But Dan Orlovsky, as you watch number 12 play right now, what thought goes through your mind? There's not a quarterback that in coach combination that I want going into the playoffs more outside of Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, than Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur. I said it last week, Matt LaFleur needs to be in the conversation for coach of the year, and I know Patrick Mahomes is balling, and he's probably the front runner for the MVP, but walking side by side with him is Aaron Rodgers. He's probably doing just as